join us again for another amazing episode. Although we can't wait to see you again, we still want to try and bring the club experience to you. We know it's been difficult, but remember, there's always something to be thankful for. Today, be thankful. Think about how rich you are. Your family and friends are priceless. Your time is gold and your health is wealth. Hi kids, how y'all doing today? It's Coach Dante from the Walt Disney Club. And I have a couple of keys that I believe are gonna be vital to you having a successful young adulthood. Key one, planning. Always make sure you have a plan. Set some goals. Set some small goals at first. Start off by raising your GPA, saving money, getting a job, graduating from high school. Then move on to graduating from college or getting a trade, buying your dream house, setting goals, is essential writing them down have a notebook and check them off as you begin to accomplish them second key discipline you have to be disciplined in everything that you do especially with your money so always remember what is a want and what is a need everything is not essential Everything is not a need. Some things are a want. Figure out what are your wants and what are your needs in your life and discipline yourself not to overspend and get too caught up in the wants. Third, bounce back. You have to have the ability to bounce back. Life will sometimes throw you some serious curveballs. You have to know how to be able to adjust. Things are not going to always go your way. Resilience, resilience. In the midst of adversity, you have to be able to remain resilient, even when things are bad. I think of animals in the desert. You know, there are certain times in the desert where life is green and it's plush, and there's water and different things of that nature. But I always look at the elephants. And what the elephants do is the elephants, even when it becomes dry, they adapt and they're able to survive until the rain comes again. And kids, sometimes there's gonna be some dry seasons in your life. There's gonna be some times where Things just look bleak. Things just look dried up. But I promise you, the rains will come again and what was the desert of life will soon be filled with grass. The next step that's important, confidence. Always remain confident. No matter what, tell yourself, encourage yourself. I got this. I got this under control. I will be victorious. And last key, positive thinking. Never let negative thoughts get in your way. Even though things might come, you gotta be able to speak to your situation. Speak to your situation and say, you know what? I'm going to make it. I am going to make it. Positive thinking. As you think, so you should be. If you don't think you're gonna make it, you probably won't. Have that confidence to know that, hey, I got this, positive thinking. So, hey kids, I hope that's been able to help. See you next time. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miss Ruby's rad word of the day. Today's rad word is empathy. Empathy signifies the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. It is our ability as humans to feel or at least attempt to understand the happiness, pain, struggle, or even joys that another person feels. During times like this, we should enhance our abilities to empathize by trying to understand what others may be going through with their families or even possibly alone. Let's reach out to at least one friend or family member today to make sure they are doing okay. 
I feel a strong sense of empathy when I think of all of my club families and members, and I'm sending you all lots of positive energy and good vibes. Make sure to join me next time for Miss Ruby's rad word of the day. Bye. Hi there. Um, today we are in the kitchen, so we're putting our chef hats on. I forgot mine. Okay, you're gonna see that I have a lovely chef, Mr. Lewis, here. So today I am Miss Chef Connie, and then of course we have Martha. Hi, Martha. Hi. Okay, so we're gonna do a cool thing today that I saw online. So I'm not taking credit for this, you know. Whoever did it, kudos to you. Wonderful. It looked great. I did not do it before like I always do. So uh, we're gonna be the first ones to um, try it today, right, Lewis? Yes, okay. So let's go with the ingredients. We're gonna do waffled corn dogs. Okay, so. Okay, you might say corn dogs is not healthy, but yes, in a way it is because it's got corn. Yeah, um, the hot dogs that you could use could be the turkey hot dogs, so it could be less um, calories. Also, we're not frying it. So if you see and you come here, like I said, waffle, so it's going to be waffled in there. All right? If you don't happen to have a waffle maker, then I guess you could do it on the pan. Just don't put any extra oils on it. Just maybe uh, a little spray of Pam. Or if you happen to have a little bit of olive oil, but not much, so it will not stick to the pan. And it will be the same thing. It's just it won't be having those squared waffled shapes, okay? So let's go with the ingredients. Today we have, um, for the, this recipe is going to be one egg, which Mr. Chef Lewis already kind of whisked it in. You want to show them? Whisked it in. Okay. Now we're going to have one box of the Jiffy Corn uh, Mix, which everything goes in there. Dump it in. Okay. Then you can mix it a little bit. Then you're going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. Let me help you out, Mr. Lewis. So two tablespoons of melted butter. Hey. See, guys, you can help mommy do this. Or you can mix it yourself, this is not hard. Then you could mix in the half a cup of sour cream. It doesn't have to be the brands that you see here, okay? But half a cup of uh, okay. Yes. See, so make sure that kids, you make, um, you try and help mommy out, okay? And have maybe everything before uh, doing this ready because honestly, I did not do it. <laughs> okay, so half a cup of sour cream. You might say, oh, Miss Connie, sour cream, ew. When it's mixed in food, you don't taste the sour cream, guys. Okay, now, nice, very good. Then we're going to add half a cup of cheddar cheese and we're going to add two tablespoons of chives. And you might say, what are chives? Well, chives are a little, onions and this is what they look like looks like a little string and that's what it is and if you smell ooh, they smell just like onions smell smell <laughs> okay so those are chives for those who do not like onions you don't have to put a lot you don't have to put the whole recipe you could put a little bit or hey let's mix it up you could put red peppers green peppers you could put ooh, our favorite at least it's mine cilantrillo oh my god híjole it will be nice and mexican i love it well cilantrillo yeah mexico puerto rico it's ours all right so you see now we have the mix nice that looks really colorful. Now, I forgot to say the main ingredient, the hot dogs. So we need four hot dogs for this. They have to be cut in half. So when you see the hot dog is just like this. 
So you cut it in half. And by magic of TV, you cut it in half again. And there we go. Yay! Now we gotta put the skewer in the hot dog. That's what it looks like. So you have to put some a little bit of pan on the uh, waffle maker so it won't stick because honestly I've done it without that at least the pancakes for the waffles and if you don't put that it will stick and you will not be able to take it out okay so now we're gonna spoon in some mixture on all four not that much there you go see guys okay yeah <laughs> we were kind of limited on our choices of spoon guys sorry but kind of created a big mess but it's okay it's the kitchen now let's do it on all four so once you have that you just put the hot dog like that and then you're gonna put another little well, it's our first time doing it. You see, the kitchen is not perfect either, guys. So art, kitchen, the art of cooking is not perfect. So don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be just like we saw it on TV. Now, we're just gonna close and we're gonna let that cook for four minutes. But while that's cooking, yeah, do not do excess because it comes out, you see? But when you're at home and you're doing it um, with uh, your patient and, you know, calm down. You know, here we're trying to rush it up because, you know, we're on TV and we gotta make it short. We gotta have everything done. That's why. But when you're at home, just make sure that you do a little bit and you'll be fine. So while that's cooking, let's come on to this side because we have a healthy snack today. You might say, oh, what it is? Miss Connie's doing ice cream. And I say ice cream. I don't see no ice cream machine there or anything. Well, you know what? This is complete natural ice cream. So we're going to do strawberries. And we're going to do bananas. Now, this you have to pre-do. So you cut it and you have to put it in the freezer. So it will be nice and frozen. Because if you do it without freezing, you're not going to get the consistency of ice cream. And then you don't have the satisfaction of eating it right away. So if you happen to have one of these, this is wonderful because it will mix everything together. This is one of those um, food processor. Yes, there you go. See, I got it, I got it. But you could also do it in a blender. But being that we have this, then I decided to uh, do it on this because it's quicker. Now, all we're going to do is... Put your bananas. Wonderful. So now we put the bananas in here. But, okay, you could do it different ways. You could do just the banana, which is wonderful. Believe me, I've tried it. You could add some vanilla. You could add a little bit of juice, whatever you want. If you want it straight up, it's just regular bananas. But today, because I did bananas before, I'm going to do a banana strawberry one. So, we're just going to put some strawberries in here. You see? That's it. And now comes the magic part. Okay? Make sure that everything is good. And we're just going to press so it could go. And I don't know if you can see the magic, but you see how it's mixing? And that's why this has to be frozen because the end product is going to be like an ice cream or sorbet. It's, it's a little bit softer. But honestly, if you smell that, oh my God, smell, smell, yeah, and this is done. Now, we open this, and I want you to check out this product here. You see that? Now, if you want it kind of a harder consistency all you got to do is put it in a bowl put it in the freezer leave it a couple of hours and that's it but 
if you want it like this because you can't wait okay this is this is kind of too big give me a minute I'll be right back I'm back okay I got a smaller scoop that it will go in okay you see this <gasps> wow seems like we have a very nice this is not even a snack this would be a nice lunch okay so we could do that so you see what I mean by having a, li a little bit um if you put it in the freezer a little bit uh, harder because like that you could put a little bit of maybe Nutella oh my god and we are done now guys we have to try this Chef Lewis Chef Martha Chef Connie together let's try it we already tried the crone dog. Let's try it with some Nutella. Let's see. Oh, wow. That is so good. <laughs> High five. This is like eating. I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> Chocolate strawberries with a banana. It is wonderful. Did you see me add sugar? Did you see me add juice? Nothing. So it can be healthier than this. You're eating pure fruit, just like a consistency of ice cream. Okay, so next time you have um, bananas that are going to waste and they're really dark. I don't eat them like that. I'm sure you don't. That's the best way to eat a banana. All you have to do, cut it in pieces, put it in the freezer, Put it in your mixer and you got ice cream banana okay so going back over here we think that this is already done Woo! that looks so good make sure that you put the temperature not that high so it will cook because i kind of um put it too high so for those who like it crispy hey why not you know so let's see let's see if this is gonna work go ahead it in half. Yeah, we could. May oh, you could use your special knife. Kids, don't do that at home. Don't try it. Let mommy try it and do it for you. It's not cooked that much on the inside. Okay. So we're gonna take it out. Look at that. And now, look at that. Now with the knife, we're gonna cut it in half. what the finished product is Woo! let's go here you go um if you want to use the regular shish kebab um sticks because they're going to be a little bit more sturdier than this one but yeah that works <laughs> and that's how it looks okay very good high five yes we did it and i don't know you want to try it let's try it it's gonna be hot mm. that actually tastes really good and <laughs> um, i haven't gotten to the hot dog <laughs> you gotta try this at home guys it's like cornbread but with a hot dog in between mm -hmm. very good try it <laughs> So, with that being said, Mr. Chef Lewis, come over here, please. Let's say goodbye until next time. Bye. Bienvenidos todos. Soy Miss Ruby con el frase del día. El frase de hoy es empatía. Empatía significa participación afectiva de una persona en una realidad ajena a ella generalmente en los sentimientos de otra persona. Durante tiempos como estos, podemos ser más empáticos con los demás que andan sintiendo felicidad, dolor, tiempos difíciles y hasta alegría. Hoy tratemos de llamar a un amigo o familiar para asegurarnos que estén bien. Durante estos tiempos, pienso mucho en las familias del club. 
Les envío muchos abrazos y buenas vibras. Acompáñenme para el próximo Frase del Día. ¡Adiós! Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Hopkins and I work in the main office for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Florida as the Director of Data Management and Professional Development. And today I'm going to uh, show you some yoga poses that will help you practice with your balance, um, but it also the practice of yoga helps you to keep both mentally and physically in shape. So the first pose that I'm going to do is called kite. You want to have your feet about shoulder length apart. You're going to bring your hands to the top of your head and clasp them together. And then you're going to slightly move your torso so it goes to the side. And you want to feel a stretch right here in your torso. And you're just going to hold that for a couple seconds. I would say 10 to 15 seconds. Then you're going to come back up to the center and go the opposite direction. And then back to center. The second pose I'm going to show you is called tree. It's kind of similar to kite, but your feet are in a different, a little bit of a different position. So again, your hands are going to go to the top of your head. And then starting with your right foot, you're going to place it in one or one of these three positions, either closer to your foot but touching the other leg, almost to the shin, bringing it up towards the knee, or bringing it all the way up to your thigh. And you're just going to stand like this for about 15 seconds. Okay. And then we're going to roll your arms around a little bit, give them a little break, shake out your legs. And then we're going to do the other leg. Again, arms up. You can try to start from the bottom if you're not, if you don't think you can go all the way to the top. Um, I recommend starting from the bottom and then slowly moving your way up. See, even I don't have, I have issues with balance. shake everything out, loosen yourself up. I don't know about you, but I'm already getting a little sweaty from all these different poses. So the next one is called chair. And the reason it's called chair is because it looks like you are trying to sit in a chair, but there is no chair behind you. So first, have your feet about shoulder length apart. Put your hands up to the sky, but they're not touching. They're just remaining open. And then you're going to squat as if you were sitting in a chair, but you're not. Make sure you keep your head up and not facing the ground, but up towards, towards the window or the wall. All right, then release, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And then since there's no alternating from left to right, we're gonna do it one more time. Shoulder length apart, arms up, squat down to a chair, and keep your face forward. And I would also challenge you, if you feel like it, try to go even lower this time. Try to go lower into the pose. All right. One last pose I'm gonna show you for this video is called airplane. And this is probably the most challenging of the ones I've shown you today. Um, so do it at your own pace and, and don't feel like you have to be perfect on the first attempt. So the first step in this pose is that you're going to choose one leg to put backwards. Okay, so sticking out in the back. With your arms, kind of like airplane wings, you're gonna keep them behind you to the side. Again, you're going to keep your face looking forward and holding this for about 15 seconds. All right. Shake it out. Shake it out. All right. Now we're going to switch legs. Shoulder length apart. Foot out. Hands.
hands out. Face forward. And you don't want your leg to be too bent. A little bend in the knees, okay, but not significantly. And we're done. Woo! That was, that was quite a workout, man. But I hope that this taught you some um, different yoga poses that you may or may not have been exposed to before. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you club kids back in the clubs when, we're, um, when we reopen. So thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. Hi, Tasha Robinson Banks coming live with your hot topic of the day. Question, have you noticed all of the commercials and the attention now focusing on essential workers and the amazing work that's being done out there? Well, I've got a question. Why haven't essential workers been celebrated this much before? Their importance hasn't diminished as a matter of fact. As usual, they've taken it to the next level in the areas of dedication, care, and sacrifice. I'm gonna be real with you. Without essential workers, we can't exist. Actually, the saving of lives, the going above and beyond, uh, all the sets of tools that they use every day to get things done. And to be real honest, we should be celebrating essential workers 365 days a year. Now let's chat real quick about one of the more important essential workers. And I am thinking that this person, or I'm not thinking, I know they wear many hats. Um, we're going to kick off Mother's Day early. Yes, let's give it up for the moms. Well, we know that these people fill an important role in our lives. And if you're not a mom, you still are important because you have some amazing people that you've helped to maybe rear or guide or mentor. Um, and I want to tell you, I'm thinking about the gifts and the things that may be given to me because Mother's Day is coming. And of course, there will be flowers and candy and sweet smelling perfumes and possibly some jewelry. But do you want to know what we, as essential working moms, want? We want to see all of the kids and the people we cherish live full, healthy, complete lives. And so I'm going to ask you today in this hot topic, Take the time to cheer on all of those who help make your life worth living. Take the word essential. Everyone should share energy needed to increase abundant life. You are important. We care about you and I look forward to chatting on our next hot topic. Hey guys, Miss Ellie from Tupperware here to teach you some more American Sign Language. So let's start off by reviewing the alphabet. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Fantastic! Today, I want to teach you some numbers. Now, numbers in sign language can get a little bit confusing when you first start out, but I promise you, it's really easy once you practice. So, for numbers 1 through 5, you're going to sign them with your palm facing you. So, it's 1, 2, for 3, you're going to stick your thumb out, 3, four, five. Now for six and up, your palm's gonna be out. So you turn your hand out and we're gonna start with six and you're gonna start from your pinky and you're just gonna work your way like through to your pointer finger. So six, seven, eight, nine. So like I said, you start at your pinky, just work your way through to your pointer finger. It's the easiest way to remember it. So let's review those again. One, palm in. Two, three, four, five. Six, 
six, seven, eight, nine. Got it? All right, let's do maybe 10 to 20 and then we'll stop there. Don't wanna give you too much information all at one time. So for 10, you do like a thumbs up, but yeah, like a thumbs up and you're gonna shake your thumb. So we'll shake your hand. So 10. 11, you're gonna take your one and you're gonna flick it up twice. So 11. 12, you're gonna take two and flick it up twice. 12. For 13, you're gonna stick your thumb out like your three and you're gonna fold these two fingers down. 13. For 14, you're gonna have your four and you're gonna fold them down. 14. Same thing for 15 with a five. And then 16, through 19 is a little bit different. You're gonna take your six and you're going to flick your finger twice off of your thumb. So 16, 17, 18, 19. 16, 17, 18, 19. And then for 20, it's 20, 20. You just tap your thumb and your pointer finger together, 20. So let's review those. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now let's do one through 20. Remember, palm in, one, two, three, four, five, flip palm out, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, palm out, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Got it? All right, we'll do the alphabet one more time because I really want you to remember it and then we'll be done. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Thank you so much for joining me in learning some American Sign Language today. This has been Miss Ellie from Tupperware Brands Branch. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Stop! I'm here, kids. About to do another STEM project. Y'all see my dog, he wanna help and stuff like that. But I got another STEM project for y'all this week. We gonna make an egg turn into rubber. So just know all you will need is one egg, a clear container, and some vinegar, and we'll get it popping. I'll be right back. All right, like I said, this is a very easy uh, experiment to try out. Like I said, you just need a clear container, an egg, and some vinegar. So most likely you probably need your parents or a guardian or an adult or somebody to do this with you just because the vinegar right here, I don't want you guys to do anything that you don't need to be doing with it. But first, let's take a clear container. Bam. Your egg. You know where that's going. Booyah. Then all you do is take the vinegar and fill this up until the whole entire egg is covered. Like this. Watch. All right, see? The whole entire egg is covered. And as you can see, as soon as the vinegar makes contact with the shell, you see something starting to happen. Woo! That is the first start to the process of turning this egg rubber. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Bubble, bubble. <laughs> so now you have to wait. Because you got to wait 48 hours before you can take this egg out of that vinegar. All right, so I'll see you. Well, it's gonna be like a couple seconds for you, but it's gonna be 48 hours later for me. Two days later. Okay, y'all, it's time to see what's going on with our egg. Time has passed. So we gotta carefully pour out the vinegar like this. You know what? Maybe you don't even have to pour out the vinegar. We can just take the egg out and wipe off. As you can see, the shell is gone. The vinegar 
disintegrated the shell. So you need to get rid of all that excess white that's on it. See? And that's what you have left. And then you give it the little bounce test. Yes, sir. You seen that. You seen it. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, a bouncy egg. Greetings, this is Miss Raquel with the Boys and Girls Club of Central Florida. I'm currently on another outdoor adventure in St. Augustine. Stay tuned. Overlooking the Matanzas River, perched between the Intracoastal Waterway and the city of St. Augustine, sits one of the oldest European fortifications in the New World. The Castillo was built by Spain to protect the city of St. Augustine, and the reason they need to protect St. Augustine is because St. Augustine is protecting the coast of Florida. The coast of Florida was very vulnerable from attacks by the English, by pirates, because the Spanish treasure fleets liked to cruise right up the coast, coming up the Gulf Stream to go back to Europe. So Florida was a perfect place for pirates to hang out and attack these treasure fleets. So Spain realized they needed a permanent military installation on this east coast to protect that main source of income. The Castillo de San Marcos is the oldest masonry fortification in the United States, but it wasn't the first built here. This is Fort Number 10, just for St. Augustine. Spain went through a series of nine wooden fortifications in uh, different locations throughout town that were all destroyed either by enemies or the elements before they finally got the money and the permission to build a stone one. The stone is called coquina, which is the only type of stone available in the area. It's simply fossilized beach, sand and seashells that have been compressed together for thousands of years. It's a relatively soft stone. It's porous, which means it leaks, if you get a close look at our walls, you can see there are plants growing out of it, but it also means that it stands up really well to cannon fire because instead of shattering under the impact, it actually compresses and absorbs the cannonball. So they would just stick in like you were shooting BBs into styrofoam. Even with the unique protection of this coquina fort, many battles have taken place here. There have been three major sieges on the Castillo. Uh, the first one in 1702, the British attacked from Charleston. They lay siege for 51 days and some Spanish victory. 1740, the British attack from Georgia. They lay siege for about 28 days and some Spanish victory. And then in 1812, a bunch of Americans from Georgia are laying siege to St. Augustine. It's a campaign known as the Patriot War. That lasts almost six months and it ends in Spanish victory. This place has never lost a battle. A large part of the city's longevity was due in part to the protection provided by the Castillo. The shape of the fort is very interesting. Uh, if you get an aerial view of it, you'll notice it kind of looks like a turtle. Um, it's a, a square with four large diamond-shaped bastions on each corner of the square. And the bastions do two very important things. They give you interlocking fields of fire with your cannons, which means that any spot around the fort you can fire on from several different angles. And it also means there are no blind spots on our walls, because if you have somebody upstairs on the gun deck stationed on every corner, they can see every outside wall of the fort so nobody can sneak up on us. The fort was essential to the survival of the city because it was able to hold all of the residents during an attack. Protection behind coquina walls was one thing, but to be truly effective, the Castillo required weapons. The Castillo had room upstairs for uh, close to 70 cannons. The standard guns for the Castillo were 16, 18, and 24 pounders. That means they fire 16, 18, and 24 pound cannonballs. Pretty impressive when you think about it. All right, gang, here we go. Miss Cheryl from Northeast Lake Boys and Girls Club out in Lake County, and we are here to get you creative. So what I did is pose a thought to some of our directors to give you an idea how we're going to do this. A lot of times we are stuck in a place that we don't know how to get out of because we only see one pathway. And life is full of different ways to do things. You know, they say the road less traveled is usually more exciting or it can be. And we don't want you to always just think of things in one way. So I posed the question to a bunch of our directors and staff and said, what can you make out of this object? Okay, think outside the box. Here it is and it looks like a half of an arrow, right? So the only trick is, as you see written at the bottom, this is not an arrow. 
you need to make it whatever you can that is not an arrow. So I posed this, to, like I said, to some of the directors and, and staff at the service center, and I got some amazing results. I am so excited by what they came up with. I only wish that I had done the activity before I saw theirs because it was hard to look beyond that. So here we have, this is from Miss Martha from our Tupperware Brands branch. And you can see the highlighted portion right here. And she made that into a castle. There's a princess up in the tower. I don't know if it's Rapunzel or not, but she used her imagination and used the edge of that, okay? And then next we have Miss Erica's. And Miss Erica is from our service center. And she made a sailboat out of hers. And again, you can see the highlighted area of that original shape, okay? Next, we have Mr. Sean, the team director from the Tupperware Brands branch, and he made his a t-shirt. I think it says Band G at the bottom. It's hard to tell the way it photocopied, but you can see here the highlighted portion. There is the arm of his shirt. So, perfect. All right, next we had Miss Tasha from the Levy Hughes Club, and she made hers into a face. It looked like a big old nose going on there. And she just made hers into a face, added some detail around it, and there you have it. There was another way to think, and you can see the highlighted space that was her original shape. And last but not least, I had Miss Madison reply from our Leesburg Club, and she made lightning bolts. I maybe had Harry Potter on the mind, I'm not really sure, but you can see right here is the basic shape that we started with, and she made some lightning bolts going through her paper. So that's what we did with that first shape. Well, I'm not going to give you that first shape because you already saw examples. I'm going to give you another shape, and you are going to come up with what you can do with the shape that I have. And here's the trick with all of this. We want you to take your shape, make some pictures, do some work, and email them to us. And the email is virtual1 at bgccf.org. That's V-I-R-T-U-A-L, the number one, at bgccf.org. And you ready for it? Here is your submission that you are going to work on, okay? Here you go. All right, can you all see that? Let me see if I've got it in the right spot. All right, so there is your shape. It is not a heart. So you cannot make that into a heart. You have to use your imagination, make it anything else you want it to be. So simply just draw what looks like a half of heart and add more detail to make it whatever you want. As you can see right there in the bottom of the page is our email address if you missed it the first time. All right, write that down, get your information to us, and we cannot wait to see how creative you are in thinking outside of the box. And we will play this next week and show your submissions just like we did to our directors and fellow staff members, our coworkers coming in. I am so excited to see what you do. Before I see your stuff, I'm going to do my own. Hope you have a great week. Thanks for joining me. Miss Cheryl out. Have a great day. Welcome back to Orange County TV. This is Miss Madison from the Leesburg Club in Lake County. I'm so glad you're here today. We have a super special video that I'm so excited to share with you. It is going to be a basic soccer 101 drills tutorial where we're going to show you some really simple, really basic beginner drills that you can practice um, right in your front yard. So to get started today, we are going to need a few different things, soccer ball being one of them. Um, soccer balls come in a lot of different sizes depending on your age group. So whatever one fits you best, that's what you'll use. Um, another thing that we're going to need is some sort of stationary object. Um, in my case, I like cones. They're bright. I can see them really easily. But if you don't have cones, you can use shoes, you can use soup cans, you can use water bottles, you can use rocks, anything that you can put in the grass that's going to stay 
where you need it to for the duration of the time that you're practicing your drill. I also have a goal behind me. Again, if you don't have a goal or if you're not at a place that has a soccer goal, you can just use those objects. Um, you just set them side by side and then you shoot in between them and that'll be your goal. Two safety measures that we need to take, very, very important, Boys and Girls Club safety is our number one priority, is shoes, okay? Soccer is a foot contact sport. Please, please, please do not play soccer in flip-flops or sandals or barefoot. That is how you get toes broken and that is just not a fun experience. I've done it many a time and it is not fun. So please wear shoes. If you do not have soccer cleats, you are more than welcome to wear sneakers but make sure that they're closed toed, okay? Um, the last safety measure is going to be water. We live in Florida, it is very hot outside. We have to make sure that we are replenishing our fluids when we're sweating, so make sure that you are drinking your water. Take a break if you get overheated, um, cool off, and then return back once you have cooled off a little bit. All right, so that's all we're gonna need today. I'm really excited. I've played soccer for probably 12 years of my life. Um, all throughout elementary, middle, and high school. I coached a little bit, and I've played just a little bit for fun as an adult, so I'm really excited to share the things that I know with you guys and hopefully maybe spark an interest. So let's go ahead and get started. Tupperware Brands Branch Boys and Girls Club. Today we're going to do a different activity and um, it's a cold cap and you'll find out why. So it might not be the perfect one. Remember art is not perfect. You don't have to do it perfect. Um, if you do a little, uh, I don't know, we're doing this and you do this instead of the little arch, then hey, do a little, a little doodle and, you know, make it your own. It doesn't have to be the way that I'm doing it, okay? So today we're going to start and we're going to make our cool cat. But our cool cat, you're going to wait and see where he's going to be. So instead of doing the arch, we're going to do a straight line. From the straight line, we're going to do his pointy ears. That was easy enough, right? And then we're going to do his face kind of long right but you're gonna see why okay we're gonna do a little triangle here it could be rounded and guess what yeah you guess that's gonna be his nose okay we're gonna do a neck 
That's a long neck. You might even think he looks like Pete the Cat, but he's not. Let's do some uh, whiskers. Okay, kind of like that, okay? And you might say, hey, Miss Connie, what happened to his eyes? Well, we're not gonna do eyes, why? This is why he's cool, because he's gonna have shades, okay? So we do a little arch for the shades, you know, like if it's on his nose, okay? And we just, yeah, just like that. It looks like shades enough, right? If you wanna do a little insert, okay? Now, this is the cool part. We're gonna have him, I don't know, let's put him in the beach. So I'm using different color uh, markers so you can have an idea of what is it that I'm doing. So let's say this is the water. Yes, this is the water here, okay? You don't have to do that because then you're gonna color it in and um, we want it to yeah, look nice, right? So this yellow is gonna represent the sand, okay? So we're doing some sand and you're coloring it in, having fun with it, whoops, whoops. And then over here, we're having the water. Yes, that looks kind of messy, but ah, kind of wavy, okay? Then here, on this side, if you have a, col a dark color blue, that it could be like, oh, the ocean all the way in the back and you see that it's a darker blue, why? Because this part here is going to be what? Yes, the sky. So we're gonna have, you know, some clouds. No, I'm not gonna put that cloud there. I'm gonna put it here. And then you're gonna color in with a lighter shade of blue or whatever you want the your sky to look. It could be, I don't know, it could be black. It could be a dark, you know, it could be at night. It doesn't have to be during the day. Now, the thing is that here, right here, through the eyes, you're going to draw what do you think he's looking at. So if you're at the beach and you know that there are beach balls, then you're gonna draw a beach ball, right? Yeah, but if he's also seeing flip-flops, then you're gonna do some flip-flops. I mean, kind of terrible, but those are my, they look like more Chinese flip-flops, but there we go. Now, if, I don't know, if you are in the park, okay, this could be close to a park and you see kids playing in the park. So then, hey, they play, ah, I love my stick figures and they're playing with a ball. Yeah, I guess they're playing volleyball, you know, I don't know. The point is, whatever you want, him to see draw it if you're feeling happy draw it do a happy face because you're happy if you're feeling sad whatever you want him to see right there that's going to be then i don't know we kind of want to do a little palm tree i forgot about the palm tree because you know i mean we're okay blooper time it's not working let's go with the black okay no 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 let's go with the green okay so yeah, so here we have a little palm tree and you know, so it can make it a little bit more uh, parky type or beachy type, okay? So, oh, you know what? I forgot to color our cat. So, I mean, you could do, let me see, the brown is not working at all. So let's make a tabby cat. Could be orange, okay, we know, not orange, but more on the high yellow tones, but then he could be also black and he could have stripes. I don't know, whatever you wanna color him. Oh, we forgot to make him a little, you could do better than that. It's kind of easy to do it on paper, but here when I'm doing it, it's kind of hard. So you get the drift. Color the cat. You could have a purple cat. It doesn't matter. You could have a red cat. You could have a, I don't know, a green cat for that matter. You could put him in the moon, put him in the park, put him in, in driving a car. Whatever you want to do, it's your imagination. Now, let me show you the finished product. 
and this is what I did. So this would give you an idea. I don't want you to do it exactly like that. Use your imagination. And again, I challenge you, send me pictures. I want to see what you did. I hope it's better than mine. Bye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed spending time with us. We can't wait to see you again next week for another episode full of fun. Don't forget to share with your friends all the exciting things you saw here. And remember, even though we're miles apart, you're forever in our hearts. Bye. See you soon.